Well, it's winter time here in Rhode Island, and you know what that means? That means that the 2019 shore fishing season, at least for me, has come to a close. It's a sad day for us all. But, the good thing about winter, it gives you an opportunity to look back on how the season went as a whole. Now you've heard me complain a few times that this season, the fall run, just didn't live up to the hype. There are a lot of blitzes to be found, sure, but almost in every single blitz, there are no keepers to be found. A little guy. Sweet. Awesome. Fun. Eight inch striper. Now, as a hardcore shore fisherman, after a while, you get sick of pulling up 22 inch fish. That's just how it goes. If I dedicated my entire season to chasing these blitzes and throwing out lures into them, I would have had a very mediocre season. So, I figured I'd share some knowledge on a tactic that honestly saved my 2019 season with some pretty big fish, but for some reason is a dying art of shore fishing. And that tactic is chunking. Holy Jesus. What is that? What the fuck is that? Now for some reason, chunking pogies for striped bass has a bit of a negative stigma attached to it. And honestly, for the life of me, I have no idea why. Maybe those lower purists don't like getting their hands dirty. But I've actually gotten flack for using baits for striped bass this season. Some people don't like it, I don't understand. So those lower purists can take those Yozuris and Gary Yamamoto's and shove them right up. Nah, I'm just kidding. I love using lures too. But chunking is an extremely effective way of getting big striped bass, especially at night, and has actually gotten me my personal best striped bass. So, here's a couple basic rules I follow to give me the best chance of success when targeting striped bass via pokey chunks. Now my first rule of chunking is having the right equipment, and with me, I like to keep it simple. Okay, so the rig I use is actually very simple. All you need is around a foot or two of monofilament leader. I usually use around 60 pound test. Um, you need a circle or J-hook tied onto it, depending on your preference. Each has its pros and cons, in my opinion. And then you also need a barrel swivel to tie to your main line. And of course, you're going to need weight to sink the bait down to the bottom. I personally like to use egg sinkers, and you're going to be using anywhere from 2 to maybe 6 ounces, depending on the depth and current of where you're fishing. And just slide the egg sinker onto your main line. And then you're going to take your barrel swivel of your leader and tie it direct to your main line. So what happens is, is your weight just slides down right nicely on top of your leader like that. And it saves you a couple bucks on buying uh, those weight slides for bunker weights. Now the most important thing about these rigs is always having extra with you while you fish. Ideally, I like to have at least six extra because A, you're going to get stuck on the bottom a lot. It's inevitable when you're dropping baits on rocky structure. And B, with these mono leaders and throwing out big bloody baits, you're bound to run in to the big bad bluefish. It's a pretty big blue, man. Ah, there he goes. You knew that was gonna happen. When you fish mono leaders, you're bound to just get cut by bluefish. In addition to the right tackle, you also want to make sure you have the proper gear so you can fish comfortably and safely. Waders, corkers, and a headlamp are a must. I also like to keep a pair of extremely sharp scissors in my tackle box, which surprisingly works a lot better than a dull knife for cutting pokies. One last thing to remember is to bring plenty of bait, because there is a lot of other species down there other than striped bass that you'll inevitably catch as bycatch. There's a fish. What do we got? That is a oh, sea robin. Nasty little things. Apparently they're good to eat, but I'm not testing that out today. My second rule is to not be lazy and do something what I call active chunking. Now what I mean by active chunking, I'm always at least an arm's length or holding my rod when having bait in the water. So when you finally get that massive hit, here he goes, here he goes, yep. you can set it. Also, when you're out here, changing the location of your chunk can greatly improve your odds of hooking up. Try throwing more left on your next cast, or maybe deeper out, more shallow or to the right. Changing your location by just a couple feet 
can increase your chances of hooking up. Also, be sure to change your baits out every 15 to 20 minutes, ensuring that you have fresh bloody pieces out as opposed to, uh, you know, chewed up pieces of scrap that a big striper might not want. Now my final rule to remember is pick good spots to chunk. And without spot burning, this can be done in really two simple ways. Now one way of doing this is just simply by scouting. If you're driving around and you see a crazy blitz going on and you know, bait and stripers going crazy. Dude, it just developed right in front of us. It's probably a good idea to head back to that spot later and drop down some chunks. And the other way of finding some promising fishing spots is just by doing a little homework. I like to take a look at a map of the area I'm scouting and see if there's any structure, drop-offs, and of course, public shore access that I can get to. And hey, if it's private, just wait till nighttime and sneak on anyways. Well, that's about it. Now, I'm gonna go drink myself into a coma because it's the middle of winter, the fish are gone, and I got nothing better to do. Oh.